I would describe our investment approach as high conviction. So typically a portfolio of 40 to 45 holdings. So that's relatively concentrated, not overly concentrated, but relatively concentrated. Um, but we are um, pragmatic and balanced in our style. Uh, so we're flexible, so we will move the portfolio around according to uh, the prevailing economic or market conditions. So there's a top down overlay in terms of the process, um, but I'd say 80% of what we focus on is stock selection. It does change, uh, the approach is flexible. So we have a top down overlay in terms of fund positioning. Uh, and quite simply, if we think we're going to move into a recession, we'll position the fund defensively. Uh, and likewise, if we think we're moving into economic recovery, then we will look to get more economic sensitivity in the fund. So since December, there's been a strong recovery in equity markets, uh, following a sharp sell-off uh, in the final quarter of 2018. Um, that, that recovery has largely been led by those stocks that, that underperformed quite substantially in Q4. At the current point in time, we have around about 7% of the portfolio in cash. Uh, ordinarily, this is quite a high level of, of cash to have in the fund. Uh, typically, I would look to run the fund with 0% to 1% cash. Uh, so 7% is quite a high figure. Uh, and this simply reflects the fact that the fund has been seeing inflows uh, year to day and we are looking to invest those inflows into the market. Yeah, I, I describe it as we top sliced our position in Fever Tree. Uh, Fever Tree was a poor performer in the final quarter of 2018, uh, but over a longer period of time, it's actually been an exceptional performance since IPO. Uh, the recent sell down followed um, you know, the fact that we topped up our positions on that share price weakness in Q4, uh, and we just looked to control our position sizes. Um, but it's been a great performer and we have very, very strong expectations for that company going forward. Yeah, a, num a number of uh, favourite holdings in the fund, uh, positions like Boohoo, uh, that's been uh, a stock that the fund bought into uh, in, at, at its IPO in 2014. Um, that's the largest holding in the portfolio and we're very excited by it. Uh, but other names like uh, Blue Prism, uh, Burford Capital, um, fast growing uh, investments. Uh, that we think will drive a lot of share, shareholder value uh, over the coming years. I would say we're fairly balanced at the current point in time, but we were heavily underweight UK domestic cyclicals in the first half of 2018. Uh, these uh, domestic cyclicals actually sold off very aggressively in the final quarter of 2018, uh, and that simply reflected the fact that you know, the whole sort of Brexit backdrop uh, really seemed to elevate itself to um, you know, a sort of a heightened state of, um, of angst uh, in Q4. Uh, if you think back to you know, the vote of no confidence in Theresa May, for instance, shortly after uh, she unveiled the withdrawal agreement. So domestic cyclicals sold off very aggressively uh, in that environment on fears of um, a hard Brexit. Uh, we used that opportunity to uh, start to increase our exposure to those UK domestic cyclicals, using that you know, share price weakness as the opportunity to do that. Uh, where we are now is broadly, um, broadly balanced versus the benchmark, so we've added meaningful exposure to UK domestic cyclicals uh, ahead of hopefully a Brexit outcome uh, at the end of March.